Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge Diaries, BCBC Diaries for short. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker once again. We have two great guests coming up in just a couple of minutes, but I wanted to start off by giving props to some of the folks in the month of July who have so far qualified through the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. There was a contest over at Naira. Mainly the action has been over at horseplayers.com. We'll flash their names up on the screen now so we can give credit to Brian Agee, David Santoni, Sean Pilar, Shad Walton, Steve Nemitz, Joe Johnson, Eric Pinheiro, and Matthew Weisenberger. Those are this month's qualifiers so far for the BCBC, which is, if you don't know, the premier live bankroll betting contest, $10,000 buy-in in conjunction with the two days of the Breeders' Cup. But the wise guy way in is to qualify. And you can do that in a number of contests around the country. We'll get to some of those in a minute or over at horseplayers.com. There's also a lot of upcoming qualifying action for the BCBC. And we'll show another graphic up on screen now, highlighting that up and coming action, starting with a Haskell Day contest at Monmouth. That's July 20th. You can contact Brian Skirka at Monmouth Park if you want to get involved in that one. Be Skirka at monmouthpark.com. Then following weekend, two-day event, the Del Mar Summer Challenge coming right up. July 27th and July 28th, Chris Barr, the point of contact for that one, Chris at dmtc.com. And while we're at it, let's look ahead to August. More qualifying action for the BCBC at Monmouth Park on August 3rd. Once again, Brian Skirka, the point of contact there. And we talked about Del Mar before. Another great opportunity at Del Mar is going to be happening on Sunday, August 11th. That is the LRF Cares Charity Challenge. You can play that one on track or at tvg.com. We have a little pretty link over on our website if you want to go right to the page in the moneypodcast.com slash LRF. We'll get you all the details on that one. It has the added benefit of helping out the LRF Cares Charity, which helps to rehome and retire old racehorses. So a great cause as well. The first guest on today's show is one of our regular players. He hasn't qualified uh, for the BCBC yet during our BCBC Diary show, but he did get a valuable stepping stone yesterday over at contestjockey.com, winning a seat to the Four Star Dave Challenge at Naira $1,000 value, and he'll try to parlay that into more uh, fabulous prizes. He is Justin Mustari. Justin, how are things? Good. Very good, actually. It was a good day yesterday, so happy to be here. I was saying on that show, which will be airing on YouTube once we get it cut, that I think you're a fascinating player because it seems to me that you prefer live bankroll play, but you have the creativity in your handicapping to come up with these big long shots that mythical players are actually typically more known for than live bankroll players. Is that a fair assessment of your play and how do you view your own ability to pick long shots in these live bank events? Yeah, I think that's a perfect example of how I learned how to play the game is that I never wanted to wager a ton of money to try to hit a couple chalk doubles or chalk exactas. I always wanted to wager as little as possible and still play the chalk, but maybe put in some 16 to one, 20 to ones and run in second or even in tries potentially getting them to run third. So that's kind of how I learned to play the game, trying to find value in those type of ways. So now it kind of incorporated in with the pick and pray type situation. Sometimes it doesn't always work out because those 17, 20 to one shots don't always win, but you can get them to run second. And a lot of times those 17 to ones running second in the pick and pray are just as good as a chalk or a second choice to win. So, and then with the opportunity of them winning, it's it's huge value in those in those type of contests. Contest jockey a little bit different, and we're going to be running some contest jockey games in partnership with our friends over at Naira this summer. Folks who want to sign up for a free account, contestjockey.com, go ahead and do that. You'll get you'll get emails. That format 
unique in the contest world to this point in that it's win only, and yet you still had the guts as we got down to the sharp end of the tournament yesterday to make a big plunge on Unstable Prince. Tell us what you liked about this horse. Yeah, the horse was coming second off of a layoff, and the two favorites in the race, in, in those type of races, I believe it was a claiming 25, you get a lot of droppers in there, and sometimes at Saratoga, they drop them in. They know someone's going to pick them up for that price, but they may not be able to run back to the, the level they were before, so they're dropping them in. I was completely against the two favorites there, and they were big favorites, so you're getting a good value on some horses at 10-1, to 12-1 to morning line. My horse actually jumped up to 16, 17 to one mark. So I thought I was getting even better value. And second off the layoff, he did run well. We have actually an opportunity because we were filming the contest to watch you watching that replay. Let's go to that now. With a four length lead out in the center of the track, Unstable Prince Dig is in. gobbling up the ground. Go though. on by. Here comes Unstable Prince. Come on. Unstable Prince and Ramon Let's Vasquez go. have collared street go. swag close to home. And it will be Unstable Prince to win it going away. Oh. Street swag second. <laughs> there you go, Justin. Great stuff. Uh, fun to get to watch you watching that. That's a gimmick we want to do more of here on BCBC Diaries. Never, If you ever have a big thing going, ne never feel bad about uh, filming yourself. So we, we can do that equivalent again. I think the most interesting thing about that race was this is the dirt at Saratoga where deep closers have not been doing well. You stumbled out of the gate. You, you couldn't have been feeling too good at that point. Yeah, stumbling out the gate with a deep closer is not the spot you want to be. You know you're losing three, four lengths immediately off the start, but they were going pretty fast, and some of the horses that were sitting middle of the pack weren't the best closers, so I cut turn it for home. He made a big move, and I knew I had a chance from there. Del Mar coming up this weekend. Going to be some great Breeders' Cup qualifying opportunities out there. Their contest early in the meet, the LRF Cares contest we've talked about as well. Later in the meet, I think the Pack Classic contest is also going to have BCBC seats. And then we've got Naira. You already have one hand going forward in their biggest contest this year, which is the Four Star Dave Challenge. What does your horse playing look like over the course of the next seven, eight weeks? Yeah, so I probably won't play too much online for horse players, horse tourneys. I'll kind of look for um, the same contest that I, that I won yesterday. Something that's live money not too big of a bankroll, somewhere in the 300 to to $1,000 range, something that I'm not going to put a ton of money into the prize pool in just so that I have more opportunities with that money betting-wise. And say, you can have a good day and not finish in the top two and win a BCBC seat, but still come out ahead for the day. So those are the type of contests that I'll play in. So I'll be looking for a couple of those coming up in the next month. And we talked throughout this segment about contest jockey. You had a little bit of experience playing in a format like this with the World Horse Player Tour experience. Folks can find that video on the In The Money YouTube channel. Fun to see a, a younger version of Justin Mastari. Then, like now, we're running circles around uh, many of his peers. But what do you think of the contest jockey format in general as a format? Yeah, being win only makes those scores maybe not as high just because you're not getting a bunch of people having place money. It kind of, you can get spread out a little more, but the opportunity to bet in your favor of, hey, I would, I like this horse a lot. I'm going to play a thousand dollar win bet instead of the minimum of 200 or 400. Um, that's where you can come in with your strong opinions and strategy comes into play for sure there. And the fact that it's, we, we, it's live bankroll, but it's mythical money. So right now there's no buy-ins at all in the games. They're just free. But even in a world where there is a buy-in, the idea is going to be, Let's get a lower buy-in so players for whom money matters can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with players who are you know, more experienced, have bigger bankrolls, etc. I love the idea that this is a way for somebody watching us today who maybe doesn't have all that much experience in contests to, to sit at the table with you and, and not be at a disadvantage, not have to worry about that money coming out of their bank because it's a, it's, a it's a fixed cost but a live bankroll. Yeah. The one thing I'd like to say is when you're playing with mythical money, but at higher amounts, we started with $2,400 yesterday. It's a perfect strategy and, and it gives you a good idea of, hey, if I'm going to play in the BCBC, playing in these events where, where the money is somewhat similar, where you may have to bet $1,000 to win on a horse or somewhere along the lines of that, 
it gets you more comfortable in those situations to be able to cash for 15,000 in a race. When you're only betting $5 in a day, it seems like that's almost not possible. But playing in these events where the money, mythical money is higher, it, it gives you a lot of experience and understanding of, hey, how do you get 2,400 to 10,000? And then how do you get that goal up to 50,000? So it's a, it's a perfect spot to learn how to play with that amount of money. And you're going to have some good experience going into the BCBC. Love that point. I often talk about the mental jujitsu required to bet at those big amounts in the BCBC, perhaps having the, the, the mythical live bank contest, a way to get people to do just that. Justin, thanks so much. We'll be checking in with you soon. Sounds good. Thank you. If I'm being honest with the audience, I'm a bit surprised it took me until week three to bring in this next guest. He has two seconds in the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge, and in recent years, meaning on the all-time money list for the BCBC, there aren't too many names higher than his. You see him every week with me over at Horse Players Happy Hour, also on Breeders' Cup social media. You might also see him on a little show called America's Day at the Races on Fox. He is my broadcast partner, Jonathan Kinchin. JK, what's up? Yeah, I guess I'm doing all right on the money list because all of those zeros that I've left with in other years don't count against me. So, um, no, it's it's my favorite contest in the world, and it's uh, it's it's an honor to have been second in it. You know, I mean, I've, look, I've never won it. I hope to win it one day, but I'm still pretty proud of the two seconds. What would it mean to you, just personally and in terms of your accomplishments as a horse player? I mean, getting fir- first horse player on the cover of DRF started this uh, little media company that's turned into something, won a couple of uh, ABR awards, uh, uh, handicapping champion a couple of years ago on the tour. What would a BCBC win mean next to everything else you've accomplished in the game? Well, I just respect so many people that have won it. Um, You know, Marshall Graham, Sean Borman, uh, the list goes on of, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it's, it's, so for me, it, it just, it's one of those deals where like, to be able to kind of put my name with theirs it would be nice. Um, and I do think it's the best contest in the world. Um, it's, it's the best racing, the best contest. It's, it's, you know, 500 plus people. So I think winning that says a lot. And uh, so it's definitely one thing that I would, would love to have accomplished uh, before I'm done with this game. While I have you, I want to talk to you about a Breeders' Cup memory. Over the years, we've done a few of them. But I was hoping we, we could roll the tape while you describe one of those seconds. And we should point out that both of your seconds were winning performances where, where uh, players, Marshall Graham and also our buddy Matt Miller, happened to uh, put a little bit more on their bankrolls than you. But it, it was not a case of anything other than, you know, finding one better on the day. These were winning efforts. And, and this win of yours is, was really something special and a story that always tugs at my heartstrings, if you don't mind telling it on these BCBC diary airwaves. Well, there's actually two levels to it, right? First of all, never would have been in this position if I didn't get hungry, stop at Chick-fil-A in the morning. There was a long line and I called eventual Breeders' Cup betting challenge champion, Sean Borman, and just talked about the races. And he told me he liked glass slippers. If he did not tell me that, I would not have used glass slipper, slippers when I went all in earlier in the contest. I would have gotten knocked out of the contest. I caught glass slippers because I was in the Chick-fil-A drive through line talking to Sean Borman. Um, so that's the first part of it. Um, then I got to a point not, where I got to. That's not the emotional part of it, but already I'm feeling like we should say that Sean Borman has 1.25 BCBC wins just based on that story. And then, uh, and then um, later that day, I, I got my bankroll up to about forty thousand dollars. I bet forty thousand dollars on Monomoy Girl. Got the bankroll up to eighty, and then made the decision to go all in and doubles uh, with the, the the turf into the classic uh, Tarnawa gets home for me, and I'm alive to four horses with potential payoffs. I think I was alive to Improbable for three hundred thousand dollars. Tom's Data authentic. Um, I'm drawing a blank on who the other one was at this point, but I was alive to four horses. And it was in that moment where so often in my life, um, I had called my father to tell him, Hey dad, you know, we're, we're alive to these four horses. Make sure you watch it. So he could, you know, have that thrill and kind of root home. Um, and I would, you know, I said, dad, you know, you know, so I, I reached for my phone and I went to call my father. And it was in that moment that I was 
reminded that, you know, three weeks prior to that he had passed away. And so it wasn't something I was able to do. Um, but I was still very emotional in the fact that there was still such a sense of pride that so often I had given my dad something to be proud of and what I had accomplished in racing and, 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 and these contests and, you know, he never missed a show and he would watch the show all the time and, and, and call. And so in that moment it was, you know, I, I there was tears. So I suppose that there's a, a level of sadness to it, but I think more than anything, I, I knew that I was going to hit the bet because I knew that I had a little bit of, of, of help there um, going into that last race. Um, and, and while I would have loved to have talked to him on the phone about it and to tell, to tell him, but uh, it, it worked out in its own right. And, and I got the bankroll up to $161,000 and, and uh, went upstairs to, to find out if I had won. I knew I had, I knew I had done well enough. I just didn't know for sure if I had won. And uh, I got the news that Marshall won. So I was very happy, happy for my dear friend Marshall. And then I got second and uh, still a pretty awesome accomplishment. And uh, it was a, it was a fun day, emotional day, Pete. And I, and I was glad that you were there as well. And, and we, we had a lot of fun. We'll be back with more BCBC Diaries soon and I'll see you on the leaderboard.